Hi guys. So if you if you got this um, spike earring SVG, then thank you. And this will be a um, tutorial showing you how to set up for it because there's multiple ways you can use this um, image or this SVG. So we're gonna just size it so we can work with it. Just do a workable size. So let's get right in. You want to unlock it or ungroup it because it's all grouped together. So as I said, this is a multi-use SVG, meaning you can set it up in many different ways. So this here layer is like your base layer. So if you use this to do glitter, foil, whatever, you could slide it behind this one. Or you could, we got to ungroup this, or, or you could use this one, let's make it a different color, and let's bring it to the front. Or you could put it behind that one. So there's multi multi uses for this and also you could put it use it if you put this one on top of this one if you want to let's say you had this one in purple purple glitter that represents purple and this is gold and you put that on top you could leave that earring just like that let's say you didn't want to have it in anything let's just say this was one of your layers so let's say you, you're using um, black cardstock as your um, layers. Then you would glue this to the top of the black cardstock. Let's, let's say you had six of these. You're going to do a six layer. Maybe you're not doing that many. Maybe you're doing four. So maybe you have four of these um, same shapes glued together for and cut out of black cardstock. Then you glue this to the top of that. And let's say you wanted all of these pieces in these colors or whatever color you choose then you know you would have to cut each individual piece in the corresponding color let's say you did red glitter orange glitter yellow glitter green this is just the rainbow until you get here but let's just say you wanted all of those colors different and then you cut all of that and then you would piece them into their places you could do that as well so that is another way you could set it up so let's say for instance we're just going to use let's cut these off for now and cut that off and we're going to leave these two on for now so let's just say we're going to use this setup here and we're going to let the this um act as our piece that's shining through or coming through these open areas here so you would want to make a duplicate of this if you're going to um, do the stud earring uh, there will be a video after these videos me showing you quickly and messingly <laughs> messingly but messy putting it together real messy so you could see how to go about that if you want to do it that way but if you're using um your laser cutter and you're doing wood or um, acrylic you can very well turn these this way put jump rings here and let it be a hanging earring it is totally up to you so to make your earrings you want to um Put this here and let's say you want it three inch now with these because of the spikes stick out this circle will be a little bit smaller if you go by if you go sizing it like this let's say you wanted a three inch area and I hit three now it's three inch from here to here the widest parts so it's three inches from here to here if you want it if you want a big earring then you have to make sure let's slide this the C part and I'm going to touch that line and I want the other C part to touch 
that line because that's one that's from here to here that's one that's two and that's three you want to make sure your C part is touching from it's got to slide over a little bit more from one line to the next line okay so from here to here that's three that means this part is three inches the whole earring though will, will be 3.5 for this one is 3.583 wide by 3.665 high it will be a big earring so if you just try to size it from like for the whole earring from this point to this point then it's going to be a small earring it's not going to be a three inch so keep that in mind so let's say we we're going to do a three inch so that now this is a three inch earring cons considering the c is three inch or this c shape horseshoe shape whatever you want to call it is three inches so you want to duplicate that not necessarily this but you can go ahead and do so and you want to take this one and you want to you want to take this one and you want to horizontal flip it so now you have your pieces for um, the tops of your earrings now you don't have to do these for the back because you can use this piece for the back so let's say you're going to use what color you want to shine through here so let's say that's gold and you want maybe red maybe you want a red to shine through there so you make this red and you duplicate it and you flip it horizontal flip it as well So now that takes care of your two top pieces. Now for your back images, for the back, let's say you're going to put the same color or it's acting as gold. So let's duplicate that. And let's fill them with that same color. So now you have... Um, this piece will match up to this piece once you cut it. This piece will match up to that piece once you cut it. So there's no need to flip it, horizontal flip it, because it's already flipped here. So you could group these. So this would be your um, gold foil for the front. This one be would be your gold foil for the front, and this one would be the back for that one. This one be for the front. That would be for the back of that one. So you could um, let's group these. Cut these off and load your mat up with your gold foil or whatever you're going to use and cut these pieces out. Then you want to come back, turn them off, load your mat up with your red glitter, um, red foil or whatever you're going to use and cut those out. Now, for your um, layers, let's say you're going to use, if you use 140 pound cardstock, white cards, I mean not white cardstock, but white um, watercolor paper, then you could use probably four layers per earring, three to four layers per earring. If you're going to use black 110 pound cardstock, then you can use four to six layers per earring the choice is yours this depends on how thick or thin you want this earring so if you're going to use the um 110 pound you're going it's going you know if you get the sheets eight and a half by eleven then only two will fit at this size only two will fit um the width of that sheet so let's say you're going to use four pieces of 
140 pounds then if you use 140 pounds you still at this size um you will still only be able to use two because that comes nine by eleven nine by twelve nine by eleven nine by twelve i think it's nine by twelve sheets so either way there's only two there's only going to be two that fits here so if you're going to use four then you you put four um you could put what two four for the eight and a half by eleven and the um, nine and nine, I think it's nine by twelve. You could put six on each sheet. So if you're going to use four um, layers per earring, then you you're going to need two sheets of this. And you just make out your six, cut those out, and then come turn four off, and then cut two more. So that will be your eight pieces for both earrings. And that's in your black cardstock or the um, 140 pound watercolor paper and then you just glue them glue everything together however you would like so to recap let's turn those off turn this on and ungroup these and we'll just use one. So this piece would match up to the back. It's not going to match up on here because once it's cut out the same way, then you're going to flip it. After you have it cut, you flip it over to the back. So it wouldn't just think of that piece being at the back. And then your colored piece. Would go behind there and then let's say this was your black card stock four layers of this and then this glued to the back and then you would glue your piece to the back that that is your earring that is it I hope this helps. It would be the same setup for the other shapes in the template as well. If you wanted to do use this one, it's the same setup. If you wanted to use this, you don't have to make any layers for for this. You just fit them into the. You would fit these into the piece into the places they go, like a puzzle. But it's the same setup pretty easy to put together and if you're doing um, laser cut or wood then you would only really need to cut this file unless you wanted some color or something behind it and then you would need to make holes in this piece or if you're doing um, colored acrylic then you just cut this shape here put your jump ring here and here put a chain and that is it. Okay, I hope this helps, guys. Thanks for watching. Hi, guys. So this is for the flat C stud earring. This is the tutorial or the setup for how to cut the flat C stud earring. If you got this from Archishalus Graphics, thank you. Okay, so when you open it up, you know everything will be grouped together. Together, you can size it. You don't have to worry about size right now. Just size it to a workable size. And let's make some different color choices. okay and slide it together so let's say you're gonna make a 2.5 inch earring pair of earrings you can go ahead and size it to 2.5 actually you want to make sure let's bring that in the send that to the front and let's bring that piece to the front as well okay 
Let's jump into it. You can, you can set this up several different ways. This is the base. So if you want to use this and you want to make that, let's say black glitter, and you want to make this one red glitter, and you can, once you put it together, it will look like that. Let's say you want to make this one maybe gold foil gold foil and maybe you want to make this one silver foil so you could just put it together like that either way you want to do it that is totally up to you so let's let's we're going to cut this one off since this is the easiest setup you just basically um, gluing this to the top of this and you're just you you will um, duplicate this and use this to make your um, layers if you're going to use black cardstock white cardstock whatever color you're going to use chipboard whatever you're going to use to thicken your earring to make your layers and um, okay so let's let's cut this piece off and let's go with the more steps route so you could um if you're going to use like i said if you want to make this black glitter and you want this red glitter you can take your glitter piece and glue it right to the top of there or you can make layers to make it a little high just sit up um like 3d a little high up off the um base of the earring so let's go ahead and put this on top and what we're going to go ahead and do is make a duplicate and we're going to horizontal flip that duplicate for the second earring and we flip it flip it because if you leave both of them the same let's just say you kept both of these the same when you go to put if you put them together and you go to put the um, earring in, see this one would go in, I would have to have it in front of me, but I think with the right ear, well, but they have, ear, they have separate, they do have um, ear assignments, if you will. So one would have to go in the left and one would have to go in the right because if you leave them both, if you cut them both the same way and you put one in the left and the other one in the right, then the one you put in the ear that it does not go in would show the back of the earring instead of the front of the earring. When somebody was looking at them, it would not show the front of the earring if, if I'm not confusing you. So you would need to flip it. So once you have them flipped, then you will need to make, if you're going to do this in black glitter and you want the back to be in black glitter, then you could do that. But let's say you didn't want the back to, the backs to be in black glitter. Let's say you wanted them to be in red. So let's um, make these duplicate and let's leave them like they are because this one this one here would match up to the back of this one and this one would match up to the back of this one after you get them cut and you flip it to put it on the back of this piece so let's make them red let's group all of this together and let's group this together so you could cut your red off and you could load your mat with your black glitter cardstock and you can go ahead and cut these two pieces then you can turn the come back and turn these on and load your mat up with your red glitter cardstock and you could cut these two pieces i mean four pieces so let's ungroup with that being said Let's work with one earring so we can cut this off and we could cut so that. cut that off and cut this off.
so now you know this would go on the back of course once you um not this piece this piece this will go on the back so once you had it cut you would flip it to apply it to the back of this so that would be the back and this would be the top move to the front now for to build your layers if you want this to be thick thick then you can use um, can some watercolor paper it is hundred and forty pounds you could do three layers of the cans and so let's let's duplicate this and let's make two more and let's make these I'm going to make them white so because the can is white so if you wanted three layers if you wanted it thick you could use 140 pound Canson watercolor paper so this would glue the let me send these to the back so you would glue these three together on top of each other then this will flip and glue to the back of these and this will glue to the top and then if you don't want any layers for this if you don't want to make it 3d then you glue that right to the top of that if you want to make it like the 3d look then you can glue two two of these you just let me make those white so you can see with the cans and paper you could do two or you could just do one because it is um, a thick paper so let's say you did two and you glue that to there to the top of the black and then you would take your um, red glitter piece and glue it to the top of that watercolor paper so it, the earring would be all put together so let's say you didn't use the cans and, and you actually use the black cardstock then you could use four layers four to six layers just depending on how thick you want it so let's say you you did and this will be for each earring as well so you did four layers and these are black So they will load, or you will glue them on top of each other, and then you would glue your black glitter piece on top of those. And then if you wanted to use um, black to make this 3D, then you could use two to three layers of the 110 pound black cardstock. So you would just make, make your two or three layers, and I'm going to make that black so you will know that's that for that. So I'm going to turn this um, silver so you can see and send it to the front. So that will glue on top of those. Just moving everything to the front. And then this would be your two layers of that black cardstock. To make it 3D look like you glue those on top and then that goes on top of that and you know this piece goes on the back and you do the same for the other earring the same that would be the shape of the other earring so again this would be your base in whatever color you want This would be your layers in black cardstock, white cardstock, whatever color cardstock you wanted. This is that top piece, the very top piece. This is the layers for that. If you wanted it 3D, you could do one layer, I mean two layers. You could do one layer, two layer, three layer, just depending on how thick you want it and which cardstock you're going to use. And this is your back piece. So again, Glue all of these together. This will glue to the back of those. 
this will glue to the top of these if you don't want to use um, make it 3d then this glues right to the top of that if you want to make it 3d then you make layers for that glue them down and then you glue this to the top of those layers and then it will be 3d and that goes on the back it will hide it will flip and go on the back don't flip it on on screen or in before you cut it do not flip it your back piece for this earring it will you just flip it on um, when you place it on the earring and there is a video after this for the setup how you would glue it all together and if you're again if you're using um, a laser cutter and you want to do wood you know you could just do these two pieces here and you can make a hole or you could just use this piece and then put jump rings here and put a chain totally up to you, you can just use this piece and make sure you make put some holes here and then put some jump rings and add a chain for a dangle earring you have options totally up to you I hope this helps guys thanks for watching hey y'all so I got on to talk about these um, two templates I made and I cut them this was the first one and it is here you see this is too narrow this is it needs to be wider so when it fits in the ear these don't run into each other when I put the pin in it it will have clearance for the bottom of the ear without having to maneuver it so this was the first one um, and if you're seeing the video, I have gone back since then and fixed this template here. So, if you want to put this one together, you can use just the um, base part. Um, you can do whatever color you want. And then you can use um, the top part to make whatever color you want. You can also just use your layers. This, just pretend this layer fits this so you could also just glue your top to the layer which would be shaped just like this and then you could piece in each individual color if you wanted to do it that way the template is set up to do just that if you want to or if you want to just use the base layer and glue straight to the top so that could shine through um, the color behind it because come through that is it is totally up to you and how you want to put this together so then I have the plain template or the flat C template so this one I fixed because I cut the other one first so I noticed it was off so for this one I'm gonna put it together and I have three layers of um, 140 pound watercolor paper I cut three layers in the same shape one did cut weird because it slid on the mat but we'll get that fixed up these fit I gotta line them up here so I cut three layers for that then with this one also if you want to just use this which is a top layer and it really cut it wrong but if you wanted to use just that and then you wanted to cut this layer in something different and then piece it in you could do that or you could use the one of the base layers one of the shape of the base and put it down and then glue whatever you wanted to on top you could do it like that as well I might have to cut this again because it just it's really it's off and this one is supposed to go this way so I cut it backwards 
on purpose. So pretty much that's what it would be when it's put together. So to start, I will just use some my Podge. This one here. And I will get my paintbrush. Oh, before I would do any of that, I had some 22 gauge, 20 gauge, 20 gauge Darius tarnish resistant gold wire. 20 gauge is pretty, pretty decent size. It's, this one is um, soft. It's half, half hard, half soft, whatever you want to call it. But it is easy to be in with your hand. So I would just get a piece. I don't even measure it. I don't even know what it measures. It's about just a little, about two inches, two and a quarter inch. So I would just get a piece and take my chain nose pliers and make a small loop or what they call an eye pin. So I would make an eye pin and I will take one of the layers. Hold on a second. Yeah, one of them's cut extra long. So let me trim it a little bit with my scissors because it slid on the mat so it did a, a wild cut so I'm just trimming it off camera you can't see okay so I've got that trimmed up so I'll take that layer just have to cut them again because it's just doing the most let me do that let me cut real quick okay so I'm back and I cut the pieces I needed now they are all even it's, it's right it is correct so now we can begin this is my first time putting it together so I just created this template these two templates so I'll let you see I have mistakes. I make mistakes and none of us are perfect. So we can learn together. Okay, so got my Mod Podge. Got my brush. Dip it down in the Mod Podge. Oh, before we do that, I did. I did do the, um, so I made the, um, eye pin. And we're going to take one of these layers. And we're just going to put some E6000 on that. Now, you could take that eye pin and you can take in, um, if you have a jewelry hammer, you can hammer it out. You can hammer it flat a little. I don't beat it all the way to the ground and make it super flat, but if you want to have it fit pretty good, you can just hammer it flat. So I'm just gonna take and put some E6000 here. That is just to glue it down. And we can, we can build and let this dry. So you wanna push it in some. Am I on camera here? It's on the stand, so I can't really see. Let me see. Yeah. So we're going to put it down here. I'm going to get my finger in there. And make sure it's in that glue. So we're going to let that stay there. And what we're going to do is take our second 
layer. Get some glue. And we're just gonna paint up, paint some Mod Podge onto it. And what we're gonna do is glue that down in place over the top. I'm gonna pick it up and kind of just hold it until it starts tacking up. especially on the corners. Now you don't have to put the eye pin in there because it does make it a little bulky. You can slide it in without doing that. I just like to do that because it just adds more stability to me. So this does not slide out. To me. If it starts drying up, I'll just put some more glue in here. these clamps here so I can clamp it down there while I make sure this is glued all the way around. You make sure it clamps down around the, um, the wire so everything will be glued down around it. This should be fine. It should have glued fine. So I'll clamp that down. It should be fine. Set that to the side. Allow it to make sure you clamp to the edge. We're just trying to make sure the edges are sealed. So I'm going to take my third piece and I'm going to add the base, the glitter base or the design base, whatever you want to call it. Instead of trying to put the glue on here, I'm just going to put it on the top of here. Just put it all the way across the top. If you get some glue on the foil, don't worry about it. You can paint right over that foil. You might have to hold it a bit to get it to glue down. But not if you're using a different kind of foil, then you may not. But, but this silver foil behind here is, is textured, so 
again this it's just what I tried this is something I use you don't have to use that particular silver pattern piece you can use whatever you like I might have to paint it down because it's not it's not acting like it wants to stick to that silver but we're gonna work with it anyway. Just moving it over. Okay, and then I'm gonna let that dry, and then I'm gonna come back and put this piece on top of this. And what I did not do is cut me a back piece, which I could cut that in that same silver, or I could cut it in the gold. So everything is semi-dry. I'm just doing this quick for video purposes. I'm not making these for anyone, just to check the template and for video purposes. So I went on to cut a back piece. And I'm just gonna glue that down now. did dull this piece a little so I think I can clear that up with the um when I spray it with rust-oleum because if I was making these for someone I would not coat these with um this is a quick earring and like I wouldn't coat them with um resin unless unless the customer wanted me to so so again, be careful in your choices, whatever you're going to choose, because that Mod Podge does dull the glitter. It will dull glitter. Now you see here, I'm not going to worry about that Mod Podge I got on there. It just comes off. Like I said, these are not for anyone. This is just for it the um, educational purposes and tutorial purposes. Now you see here, you can see that um, wire is bulky through here. So if you want to just do um, the piece without the eye, making the loop for the eye, you can. Or you could, like I said, you could take and hammer it down, lay it on the cement. Well, in jewelry, there are blocks and little jewelry hammers that you can hammer wire with. If you want to be fancy, do that that's up to you you don't you don't want to be fancy and this wire is going to be hidden under here who's going to see it you know you can use your hammer and hammer it down like i said do not go crazy and flatten it all the way down because you know if you go too far it damages the wire if you do just enough it strengthens the wire that's weird but that's how it works so you have that glue down and then we're going to flip it over and glue this piece down and grab your piece fix it in place and glue it down use your clamps to help hold in places Till it tacks up and then just glue it down. Now, once this would dry thoroughly, then I would spray it with the lacquer. Again, there's 
Rust-Oleum lacquer. This is what the bottle looks like. You can get that at Walmart. And the spray paint section is clear. You can tell by the bottle top. Or the can top that is clear. So, once everything tacks up good, like I said, I would let everything dry. I would let everything dry, people. Let everything dry. This is just sped up for video purposes. I don't want to spend all day making a video, so I don't want to have to wait for it to dry and all of that. So once I did all of that and then I sprayed it, I would then take my Dremel Dremel and I have this this in okay, you can't see it. Brushes in the way. This piece here on the end, and it's open on the end. Oh, yeah, not right here. It's open on the end. It has a dip in, in the middle of that bit there on the end. So I'll take that and I put it on, and I like to stick that wire in there and roll it around. It smooths that wire down so it doesn't have a bite to it. And this wire is copper underneath. Once you start um, sanding it down or sanding it around, you can see the copper come through. I just take with my finger and feel if it still feels rough a little. I just keep doing this until it gets smooth. The edge. There's no sharp edges. And just straighten it back out. You can see it's moving around because it's not glued down all the way, so it's still moving around. A little. This everything is not dry all the way. But yeah, that would be that would be it. Add your um, that earring stopper and do the other one in reverse, and that would be it. Well, I would paint the back of this too with my podge. I put my podge on this, then let it dry, and I would spray this also for an uncoated earring. That means uncoated means no resin. That would be it.